Hey guys, it's Jamie bringing you Recovery Inspired Hope. And this is episode three of Relationships in Recovery. I have my beautiful friend Morgan Cotton here tonight as my guest. And we're working out of this book called Love Works. Um, now we all know relationships and recovery can be challenging. They can be fulfilling. I've seen a lot of success with people having relationships in recovery, but it can also be very dangerous. Um, so we want to talk about some, some guidelines and some boundaries that maybe you might want to follow and you might want to think about. Um, so we've got some good information here. So we're going to start. Um, we are created for partnership. In the movie Jerry Maguire, Tom Cruise's character says to the love of his life, you complete me. Now that certainly sounds romantic and we probably all sighed when we heard it. But honestly, that is nonsense. We shouldn't be looking for someone to complete us. You're not some fragmented person looking for a spouse to fill the gaps. God didn't create you as a half. A healthy relationship is when two holes come together. The goal is for you and your partner to be holes. When God told Adam that it wasn't good for him to be alone in Genesis 2.18, he created the woman Eve as Adam's partner. She was not created to be a drain for him to dump on. Um, and I really like in this when they talk about um, we shouldn't be looking for someone to complete us. We're not a fragmented person looking for a spouse to fill the gaps. I know for me... Um, I constantly was looking for something to fill the void in me before mm -hmm. recovery. And when I came into recovery mm -hmm. and I started doing my steps, I realized that everything that I had been looking for, mm -hmm. significance, value, security, self-worth, I found in my relationship with my higher power, whom I choose to call Jesus Christ. And it wasn't until I was, you know, in recovery and actively doing that, what we call a uh, peeling of the onion, peeling off the layers, mm -hmm. um, which is, which I did through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, was I able to get to the root of that, of what I was really looking for mm -hmm. in everything. I was looking for a savior. I was looking to be loved um, unconditionally, you know, mm -hmm. and I surely didn't get that, you know, from my parents, <laughs> like a lot of us, you know, did it. Um, and I didn't get it through the broken relationships that I had, you know, before I came into recovery. Mm -hmm. So... Um, do you want to share on that? Um, I definitely think it's a good part just because to sit there and say, like, we can't put the burden of our worries on someone else. Like, that's almost being unfair to our partner, and that's why it's important to be whole before. And I will say, too, like, I'm not in recovery. However, that's one thing that recovery sets people up for, like, the peeling of the onion and learning the values, like, that those not in recovery almost never have the chance to take time for. And that's something where those in and out of recovery should make time for that because it's really important to know mm -hmm. yourself before you're learning someone else. Right. So. Right. Um, so next it talks about the purpose of marriage or relationships is to glorify God, to be the example of love between him and his church. Two whole people can engage in a mutually dependent relationship with honest, open, and vulnerable communication and accountability while encouraging and urging each other to further, to go further and deeper into the purpose of God. Now, there's some key words in here. <laughs> there's some key words in here. Um, one is two whole people. <laughs> so that means after you've been restored and, and made whole, um, or, or, or close, you know, working, mm -hmm. working toward that goal. Um, also, mutually dependent, which is not like being codependent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's being mutually dependent, which is different. Mm -hmm. um, and then it talks about honest, honesty, 
And we talked about this last week when I had my uh, interview with, with Brooke Nicholson. Her, she just urged, if you're going to be in a relationship, in recovery, out of recovery, you have to be honest. You have to be honest about your intentions. Mm -hmm. What are your intentions for the relationship? Do you really want to be in a relationship? What is your motive for it? You know, mm -hmm. and that is so, so, so important. Um, open and vulnerable communication. And mm -hmm. that too is like being transparent. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about last week how, you know, before recovery, I was so uncomfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. I would just try to be like whatever that person wanted me to be. They'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, like, I like country music. Like, oh, my God, I love country music. Yeah. Like, you know, like yeah. I never listened to it a day in my life. Like, I love it. Me too. That's <laughs> yeah. my favorite. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know? So, like, try, so being comfortable in my own skin, loving myself, mm -hmm. knowing that I am enough, mm -hmm. and being able to... You know, just be okay with being me with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and here it says um, vulnerable communication. So that means being vulnerable and open saying like, I don't like when you do this. Mm -hmm. This is how, this makes me feel like mm -hmm. this, you know. Even if it's silly, even if it's stupid, mm -hmm. even if you, when you say it, you kind of say it mean, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I always say, try to do the rule like, say what I mean, but don't say it mean. Uh -huh. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, I've been told that I'm mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just like to get my point across because mm -hmm. if I like, if I hold it in, then mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, being honest. I'm being right. dishonest yeah. and I'm not communicating like how I feel. And then I can't expect, you know, my, my partner to be a mind reader, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I love this while it says an accountability while encouraging and urging each other further and deeper into the purpose of God. So definitely um, accountability. So, I can say, um, like the relationship, uh, previous relationship that I was in, um, did you pray today? Did you pray mm -hmm. about this? Um, what are you studying, you know, in your mm -hmm. scripture? Or even relationships like with uh, people in my network, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, did you send your gratitude list today? Mm -hmm. um, have you gone to a meeting? Um, mm -hmm. What are you doing to you know, uh, to go further and deeper into mm -hmm. your purpose mm -hmm. and your purpose in your purpose of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think accountability is a big one. It's almost like when we're not holding people accountable, we're doing them a disservice because we're allowing them to further destroy themselves. Like I've always been really, really huge on accountability. Um, even with my friends, sometimes they say I'm mean, cause I'm honest. Like if you're right is right and wrong is wrong. So you know, accountability is huge because that's the only way we better ourselves and better how we treat people mm -hmm. and quit hurting people. And so accountability is huge. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> and Morgan and I were talking before this and she said something so profound to me. She was talking, can we repeat what you said about the heart? You said that somebody's heart is mm -hmm. not somebody's to hurt say it yeah say? so I'm really big on the heart in general and the way I treat my relationships is like their heart isn't mine to hurt and it's not my heart to break and so you don't have the right to destroy someone else's heart for your own selfish gain because it's not your heart to destroy and it's not you're not going to be the one to pick up pieces so you can't break it to pieces um and so for me the heart is just really important and making sure like those in my life I protect their heart and help them and um, so many times we, in relationships, people have selfish motives and they don't think of, well, how would I feel if the other person did this to me? And so that's where we risk our hearts mm -hmm. being further destroyed and when it was completely avoidable. Right, right. And, you know, certain people like me, I'm terrible at wearing my heart on my sleeve, you know, and mm -hmm. God always tells me like, guard your heart, Jamie, guard your heart. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I had to learn some hard lessons on that mm -hmm. on, well, what does that mean? God? Oh, well that hurt really bad. That's mm -hmm. what it means. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
So that's really important in relationships too, guarding your heart. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, so here it's talking about the two halves. So two halves united together typically experience false intimacy, veins of codependency, secrets, hiding, miscommunication, and fear about each other's purpose and destiny. It is hard to encourage your mate to become who she, he or she is in God when you aren't sure who you are in him. And, you know, this sounds so much like every relationship I had pre-recovery mm -hmm. and maybe even some in early recovery, <laughs> if mm -hmm. I'm being totally honest. Uh, it's not, you know, I've, I haven't been uh, saved or restored that long, to be honest. Uh -huh. You know, I still struggle with so many things. Um, I definitely um, used to have a huge problem with codependency which led to me being very insecure, uh -huh. very jealous, feeling like that person was like my air, like mm -hmm. I couldn't breathe without mm -hmm. them. Um, and it, it took me to a place where I had to find my security and stance in God mm -hmm. and know who, like who I was in the Lord, who God said I was, and I had to remind myself of mm -hmm. that over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Yes. Um, do you have any like tips on that? On how we can remind ourselves who we are in God? I think it's just important, like, you know, read your Bible or inspirational books. Um, and also just spending time. I know, like, the higher power thing, mine's God. And so spending time with Him of, like, remind me of who I am in you or help me to see myself as you see me. And mm -hmm. that's another thing, too, is like when I'm having trouble understanding a friend or. I'm in a relationship and I'm having trouble with them I'm always like break my heart for theirs because I obviously can't do it on my own so break my heart for what you see in them you know that helps me to see them from a different light and a lot of times that makes it easier to love them through whatever and to on the whole part where it says um encourage your mate to become who he or she is in God when you aren't sure who you are it's so easy to point out the faults of others and so mm -hmm. it's important that we stand in the mirror and we look at ourselves and we observe who we are and what parts of us we're hiding, what parts of us we need to work on. Because um, so, so many times it's easier to point it out in everyone else and we hide it in us. Mm -hmm. that, it makes me think of that scripture you're pointing out like the the splinter in, your, in their eye when you have like a log mm -hmm. in yours mm -hmm. and it's like, Ugh, I really got convicted of that. Um, like yesterday, actually, <laughs> yesterday, I was like, oh, this person is blah, blah, blah. And yeah. the Lord was like, well, really, Jamie, uh, what do you, what do you got going yeah. on in there? And I was like, oh, this is terrible. I don't want to look at that. Talk about <laughs> I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so here we are. Uh, my ability to like myself does not come from me thinking I am so wonderful, but God thinking it. In Psalm 139, 14, I am God's masterpiece. He, he's, oh, his one-of-a-kind creation, Ephesians 2, 10, and honestly, the deepest needs of my soul are met by God. I have an honest and real relationship with my creator, and I do not expect my partner to meet the needs that God only can and that again goes back to you know you can't expect your partner to make you a whole person mm -hmm. i was like setting them up for failure yes they, expectations they can't do it. Mm -hmm. yes oh so you're always gonna come out hurt uh-huh because they're not gonna measure up to that yes oh my goodness one of my friends actually was just talking to me about that um a couple days ago he was telling me like you have these crazy high expectations of you know this these people like these men that you that you date and um you can't have these expectations of them because you it's just going to cause a resentment and we know all about people in recovery we know about what, mm -hmm. what do they teach us about expectations that's just a resentment waiting to happen right mm -hmm. and um and it's so hard especially for me because i have such high expectations of myself mm -hmm. I give myself 
very little grace. Mm -hmm. I have extreme works of perfectionism. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't tell by all the stuff that I do, you know, I'm like a striver and, um, and I don't give myself any grace. Like, and if I do something that is like not perfect or I mess something up, mm -hmm. it is like a terrible, terrible day, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's so hard and I, I have to, um, to continuously work on that mm -hmm. every single day. Um, so it says here, when we don't like who we are, then we're constantly looking for someone else to fill us up. There might be a lot of reasons for our insecurity, past abuse, neglect, rejection, or abandonment. All of us to one degree or another have experienced at least one of these. Nevertheless, at some point, we must begin to believe that we are who God says we are and to live our lives out of that knowledge. Now, look, I was, I hit on every single one of those. Mm -hmm. I was like, ding, 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 ding. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm every single one. Uh, you know, rejection. I have a huge rejection problem. Mm -hmm. Anything that happens automatically, I'm like, oh my God, I got rejected. <laughs> and it wasn't yeah. even like that's mm -hmm. what it was. But for some reason, like things compute into mm -hmm. my heart as rejection. rejection. Um, abandonment as well. I have a huge fear. Even when I was little, this is so crazy. This just brought up my head. Okay. When I was in like elementary school, I would be going to the bus stop in the morning mm -hmm. and I would be scared thinking, is this going to be the last time I'm going to see my mom and dad? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I mm -hmm. was full of like fear, mm -hmm. fear of my parents leaving me. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one time my mom and dad got in a really big fight and my dad left for like a day. I was in, I was little, I was maybe six, five or six years mm -hmm. old. I remember being on my knees in my room and crying and begging God for my dad to come back. Oh, and he was yeah. just gone like one day, like one night, you know, I think he did come back like in the morning. I think he, I don't know, whatever happened between my mom and dad, they got in a fight or whatever and he took off. Um, but I was so scared and upset that, you know, he was going to leave. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have these like deeply rooted abandonment and rejection issues. Mm -hmm. And it's like, <clears throat> um, it's, it's hard not to project those into a mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. because we don't, we don't want to walk around in a relationship being fearful mm -hmm. that someone's going to leave us mm -hmm. or reject us, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, for me, I've really had to learn to, rest and trust in God mm -hmm. that no matter what God loves me, mm -hmm. no matter what God is never going to leave me and he's never going to reject me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that is, and, and just being able to like rest in that and trust that God has me and is working mm -hmm. like Romans eight twenty eight. God is working everything out for my good and God's not going to let me fall into a trap. You mm -hmm. know, he's going to make me aware of everything going on. And that should, that should help me to be able to walk in a, you know, in a lighter mm -hmm. step and, and not have to be so worried and concerned and, and pull that like controlling, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. part in the relationship, mm -hmm. which, which always drives guys away. <laughs> Yes. Now we know why she's still single. <laughs> now why, so it's all, figured it out. So we figured it out. <laughs> I think it's also big on the abandonment and rejection thing is to know it's important to know who we are in God and how God sees us because there's a lot of times where we see abandonment and rejection as God taking something out of our life that's not supposed to be there. So mm -hmm. sometimes he'll take something but we chase it because we're like, no, 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 like yes. that's mine. And it's it's not like it's yours just to hurt you basically and so he takes it away but we allow our past hurts and the little child inside of us to be like they just rejected me and they abandoned me and it's it's not that which is why it's so important to know the differences so that we're not chasing things he's taken away for our better good you know mm -hmm. yes yes um so it says here um when we're insecure we can tend to be negative and critical uh, we can't laugh at ourselves and are often just mean or manipulative. Mm -hmm. For both men and women, the the only way out of insecurity is to see ourselves as God sees us. 
When we begin that journey, we bring strength, kindness, and love to our relationship. And and I always have to check, you know, check my motives with mm -hmm. that um, and make sure like I'm doing everything out of love. Even if somebody hurts me and hurts, you know what I mean, my feelings, I cannot, you know, flip the switch and mm -hmm. <laughs> be like, okay, buddy, I got you, you mm -hmm. know, because I can do, I haven't been saved that long. I can yeah. <laughs> flip like, you know, but we, but I can't do that. I mm -hmm. can't do that. I have to, I have to do everything out of love. I have to be, have a pure heart. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to have mercy and compassion and, and love and forgive people just mm -hmm. like God forgave me. Mm -hmm. So, um, I really, I, I love this song. We were talking about the song by Demi Lovato and, um, it's called, I love me. If you haven't heard it, you, it's really, really good. Um, Demi Lovato is also in recovery. Mm -hmm. So she, she struggled with her sobriety as well. That's why I just, I just love her and her stepping out and being honest, um, so I just want to read you these lyrics and it says, flipping through all of these magazines, telling me who I'm supposed to be. Way too good at camouflage. Can't see what I am. I just see what I'm not. I'm guilty about everything that I eat. Feeling myself is a felony. Jedi level sabotage. Voices in my head make up my entourage. Cause I'm a black belt when I'm beating up on myself but I'm an expert at giving love to somebody else. I, me, myself, and I don't see eye to eye. Me, myself, and I. Oh, why do I compare myself to everyone? And I always got my finger on the self-destruct. I wonder when I love me is enough. I wonder when I love me is enough. Why am I always looking for a ride or die? Because mine's the only heart I'm going to have for life. I wonder when I love me is enough. And that song mm -hmm. just hits me every time and just convicts me because I struggle with that so bad. Mm -hmm. Loving myself, being kind to myself, believing I'm worthy of good things. You know, I've come a long, long way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but there's still so much work to be done. And I think that um, people in long-term recovery, we have to continue to love ourselves, let, let people in our community love mm -hmm. on us, let our friends love on us, um, let our spiritual mentors teach us, lead us, guide us, love on us, you know, and be able to accept that love and mm -hmm. being able to accept the love of God. That was mm -hmm. like so hard for me, you know, feeling like I was worthy of mm -hmm. God's love, um, because I'm always looking at myself, you know, I'm like it says here, can't see what I am. I just see what I'm not. Mm -hmm. And that is just, you know, something that I continuously strive to work on every single day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're a lot harder on ourselves than we are other people. For mm -hmm. sure. For sure. Yes. As, as a woman, like I would never say... Or even think the things I think about myself, especially like body image stuff, mm -hmm. that I, I would never even think that about another woman. Mm -hmm. Ever. <laughs> but to myself, mm -hmm. like I am just so critical and judgmental. And um, and it's it's a constant, constant struggle, you know. But <clears throat> but we're you know, we're works in progress. Mm -hmm. Um as long as I as I keep um grabbing on to God, you know, um, talking about, talking about God, what he has done in my life, mm -hmm. keeping a heart of gratitude, striving to be as close to him as I can, mm -hmm. you know, um, then, then we'll, we'll keep pressing forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. That's a constant cycle of progress and never ends, you know, cause there's always something else. I remember, one time um, I was talking with a friend and I was like, I don't understand. It was to do with someone in my life. And I was like, it's easy to forgive someone one time, but what do you do when they continuously do something to hurt you? It's like you're constantly forgiving. And that's, that was hard for me to kind of figure out how I had to learn how to separate them from me and learn how to say that's not my problem. That's a reflection of them, you mm -hmm. know? Because yes. a lot of times we put it on us or oh, gosh, well, like, yes. this is because I'm not good enough or something. Yes. And it's not that. It's a reflection of them as a person. So 
That's been huge for me to learn for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a that is a good lesson. I just I just had some experience with that not too long ago as well. Mm -hmm. So yes, but we're gonna keep pushing through. Thank you so much, Morgan Cotton, for coming and yes. and talking with us and um and being transparent and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And this is Friday Night Live, and we love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.